I'm going to have Keneal come and, and join me as well um, up here as we wrap up. If, if you um, did not get a communion element cup tonight, could you let us know? We're going to get one of our guys to go and help get those. Yeah, if we could go grab that basket, please, in the lobby. Is Wilson here? Oh, he is. Okay. Yeah, there he is. Awesome. Yeah, just keep your hand raised and we'll get you guys one of those. Awesome. As we um, kick off 2024, just keep those hands raised. We'll get those to you quickly. We're launching into a message series called A Seat at the Table. And this is not just a cliche kind of phrase that we're, we're putting out there in terms of like what we want to talk about, but we believe that God is, is bringing us closer to him, to each other, and empowering us in that space to actually um, together change the world as we sit at this seat at the table. And so I'm going to actually ask you, if you would, as you're taking those communion cups, um, to think about this thought, okay? I have not met a person over the course of my life and ministry who doesn't desire to have um, a life of purpose, destiny, and calling. There's something innate inside of us as human beings created in the image of God that we want to live a life of significance. If you believe that, say amen. And so there's this desire in all of us to have a seat at this table called the kingdom of heaven. We may not understand that. We may not fully get what that fully means and looks like for us. But I believe this is where God is taking a church in this specific year. He's giving us an invitation to have a seat at the table. It means that you're valuable, that your voice matters that the things that God has placed on the inside of you are significant and needed in the body of Christ. And so there's, there's a welcoming for you to ponder this opportunity to come and have a seat at the table. I want to read a verse over us tonight out of John chapter 13, verse 34. And I mean this when I say this. This is, this is going to be a radical statement. But I believe that everything in terms of what the Bible represents and is going after that is being um, brought to fruition in this thing called the New Testament, the new covenant of God, is actually represented in this one verse. So if you could give your life to anything, this would be the thing to give your life to. Let me read it over us. This is wild. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, and he's speaking it over us tonight. He says, so now I give you a new commandment. Think about this. Old Testament, the children of Israel, they lived by what? The commands of God, the commandments of the Lord. And then Jesus shows up on the scene. Everything shifts because the shadow, you know, the, the, the imagery of the Old Testament was now coming to fruition. And he said, a new commandment I give you. And here's what he said. Love each other. And you can include other people into, into that saying or that statement. As I have loved you. Super simple, but it's very profound. As we have this seat at the table and come into an experiential understanding of God's love for us. We now have the capacity to love other people. It's the only way. It's the only way that we can be transformed ourselves and have authority to transform other people. This new commandment. Here's where we're going. Ephesians 4, 16. He says this. He makes the whole body... Everybody say whole. 
whole body. Not just a few or 10% or 20. Everybody who names the name of Jesus that knows the Lord, he says that he makes this whole body fit perfectly together. And he says as each part does its own special work. This is massively important, okay? Because we, we don't live communally too well in the U.S. We live in an independent culture, all right? So he says, as the body is fit together, as each part does its own special work, here's what's massively important. It helps the other parts grow. Did you know that you need other people in your life and they need you in theirs? There is no way that we can grow into what God has for us independent from this thing called the body of Christ, from community. And this seat at the table, God is inviting us into this space right now, here as we enter into 2024. It's, it's, I, I believe it with all of my being that God is inviting us to come closer to him and to one another to see what he could do in this hour of human history. You know, from the beginning at Harbor, our mission, I want to just, you know, instead of like looking forward, I loved what we shared today about what was going on in our, in our younger generational ministry. It's powerful. But I want us to, just for a second as we conclude here tonight, I want us to look back at why we're here and why we're doing what we're doing. And here's, here's what it's all about. That it is really about the mission that God has given us to equip the generations. And I say that very intentionally, that word generations. That is from the youngest in our midst to the eldest in our presence as well. It's everybody's valuable in, in that spectrum. To equip the generations to be whole in spirit, soul, and body and empowered to minister or to love people within their spheres of cultural influence. This is the mission of Christ. It's transformed people, transforming culture. The love of God, guys, is the only thing that can transform our own lives and that sets us up and gives us the authority to transform culture. This, the representation of what this is, a body broken so that we could be made whole. Blood spilled so that we could be healed. Everything redeemed in this cup. And that's why when Jesus was sitting